Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns, and today is a great day because we also have the Opus 4.1 model that's also been released. So this I've been waiting for for a really long time, um, and it's an upgrade from the current Claude Opus 4 model, and it's great for things like agentic tasks, real-world coding, as well as reasoning. And we see here how much of an improvement it is. So this is Sonnet 3.7, that's 62.3, and then Opus 4 is 72.5, and then 4.1 is 74.5. So they say it's about a one standard deviation improvement over Opus 4 on their junior developer benchmark. And the claim is that it's about the same performance leap as you would have when you go from Sonnet 3.7 to Sonnet 4. I don't really know how I feel about that because to be honest, I kind of still like the 3.7 model more than the uh, Sonnet 4 model. And I'm only saying this from experience just because I've been using not only the Sonnet model heavily through open router. I mean, honestly, if you take a look at my open router credits page, uh, you'll, you'll see here that I just over the last two or three months, I've probably spent about 2,500 to about $3,000 on just open router credits. And that doesn't even include my Claude Max subscription, as well as the API that I've been using from uh, Claude directly, and also the API that I've been using from Amazon Bedrock. So probably spent closer to about $15,000 over the last three months on, uh, you know, all of these models. So I think I would be pretty decent at being able to figure out the, if there, whether or not there is a difference or not uh, between these models. So um, I'm excited about Opus 4.1. I think Opus 4 by itself is great. If I have a bug uh, anywhere in my code base, it's able to find this bug and fix this problem like really, really easily. And I just need to review it and just give it a go and say like, yep, this sounds great. Okay, so enough talking. Let's call this model through Open router. And I could have used the Claude provider as well, but that's fine. For now, I'm just gonna give it the Claude Opus 4.1 model. Just make sure that that looks right. I will also give it the, or enable extended thinking and allow the full budget of 6,553 tokens. And here I'm actually giving it a code base that actually has a bunch of different things. So it's not just like an empty code base. Um, this is a code base for my website for Percruit. And as you can see, like this is a full sort of landing page, but it doesn't really have anything else in there. Um, this particular folder is just for the landing page development. And what I'm going to do is simply take a screenshot of this and go here, what's wrong with my hero page and paste the link. Um, the background is really off. Can you help improve it further? Uh, think step by step and put yourself in the mind of an expert UI UX designer and researcher. List out all the things to improve and do it. This is kind of how I usually work with this sort of prompting. I ask the models to put themselves in the mind or themselves itself in the mind of what I want it to be. And there we go. It's starting to work. This is my first ever time working. Oh my God, that's that, that was 20 cents. That was 50 cents and it hasn't really done anything yet. Okay. So it looks like it is finally done now. And this cost me about $2 and 50 cents. Uh, and this is the current state of the site and the landing page. And this is the one that I just created. I absolutely hate it. This is complete waste of $2.50. But I can see an appeal that this might have for some people. I just don't think that this is the right type of thing for the product. But... I guess the UI is kind of cool. You hover your mouse there and all the stars kind of move and stuff. We have this little hover effect kind of thing. But would this really be premium? I don't know. It's like stars and space kind of vibe, I guess. But okay, uh, that's what you get for vibe coding. Let me try it one more time. I gave it the same exact prompt and this time it built this, which to be honest, does look a little bit, at least it looks different. At least it doesn't look as whatever it was the last time. 
I think it's a little bit more enterprise grade. It did add in a bunch of stuff that's not true. So that needs to get worked on a little bit. But honestly, this time around, it's not as bad as it was. Would I still change it? I don't know. Um, maybe I'll think about it. Let's also see how this works on LinkedIn. Create a post for the LinkedIn. So I basically ha had it create a full master document that essentially lists all of the things that the site actually does. And I want to see what the writing style looks like. Um, I recruit. So it does have M dashes. So a little bit of a giveaway that this is an AI generated post. 212 word count. And what's the raw content? We flipped this equation. Here's what changed. Yeah, I don't know. I think that if I was to create a post like this, it would be pretty obvious that I feel that it was AI generated. So I don't know. Is it still there in terms of like the writing part of things? I probably, I, I don't really think so. Um, but maybe I just need to play around with the prompt a little bit. Maybe give it a couple of like one, two shot examples of like how I want it to be. Maybe create like a full brand writing style. Um, if you haven't watched my video on Claude projects, um, I recommend it. That way you can kind of like create an entire project, give it a full knowledge base. And then here I can maybe add some content on, let's say text content on like brand writing guidelines and style. And then this way, anytime that I'm referencing uh, or anytime I'm actually making a chat here, it's always going to be able to reference the writing style and guideline and all of those kind of things. But yeah, so far, I, I feel like in terms of coding, it looks great. Uh, I'm going to try it out with a couple of bugs that I know that I haven't been able to fix yet. Um, and that way I'll have a full understanding of like how well this model actually does. In terms of cost, yeah, it's, it is an expensive model, so I'm not going to be using it all the time. This is just something that I would use when, you know, I'm really frustrated. I just can't seem to get to the bottom of the problem with Cloud Sonnet. And then I just, you know, either debug it myself or I would just use Cloud Opus. But that's it for this video. I think that overall, I'm really excited about this new update. Uh, the model does seem really great at figuring out a lot of different things. I'm still needing to experiment with it a little bit more. Uh, let me give it a couple of really important stuff, like things like in a huge code, code base that has a lot of different interactions and stuff. And let me see what I get back from there. But more to come. Thank you all for tuning in. If you haven't watched my video on GPT OSS model that was released literally an hour after this model, uh, watch that one as well. I posted a link to it in the description below. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.